Romans 12, we began some weeks ago on the subject we're calling transformed. Somebody say transform. You like the sound of that? Transform. <clears throat> he said in Romans uh, 12 and 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Everybody read it out loud with me. Be not conformed, Be not conformed to, this world. to this world. Now if the Lord tells you that, what should you do? Don't be conformed to this world. The, the word conform means to fashion alike. It means to conform to the same pattern. The world that we live in is pressuring us and everybody in it to conform to ungodliness. You hear the term peer pressure. Well, it's a spiritual reality. Uh, unbelievers on the job, unbelievers in the workplace, unbelievers in the neighborhood, in the community, those that don't believe in God, the very fabric of society, the very environment of the whole planet. The Bible said Satan is the God of this world. That's right. And we're just reading in uh, uh, 1 John, aren't we? And the fifth chapter talks about that, that the whole world lies under the power right. of the evil one. Well, that's a, a pressure and an influence. And that's why when you get born again and you stand up and say, I love the Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. that their pressure will come to bear to shut you up. And you don't want to do this sin or that sin. You don't want to participate in this or that. There will come pressures to try to make you feel like the oddball, to make you feel like you're, something's wrong with you and you need to conform. You need to hush and be quiet about Jesus and this God stuff and let the world shape you into itself. But something ought to yell from the inside of you and say, No! No, I am in the world, but I am not of this world. I am not like this world. Glory to God. You know, there are whole religions and movements that try to say, well, we're all brothers and sisters. And that's not true. That's just not true. There are two families in the earth. Jesus talked about it extensively. There's the family of Satan. He, Jesus told some of the most religious people of his day, you are of your father, the devil. Didn't he tell them that? How many think the Lord knows what he's talking about? He he's right. <clears throat> and unless you have been born again, you're in that family. That's right. And you are a child of darkness. And it doesn't, you know, people don't notice it because we're living in a world of darkness. Right. And that is the spirit of the whole thing. But when you've been born again, you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son and you're different. You're different. You are changed. And the Lord tells you, don't conform to this ungodly world. And you're supposed to say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I won't. <laughs> don't be conformed. It's trying to mold you. It's trying to, to shape you into itself. And you're not to allow it. You're not like them. You're not supposed to be. They need to become like you. Boy, that's conceited and egotistical. It's the truth. If you're not born again, you need to be. Conformed. Don't be conformed to this world. But what? Instead of letting the world squeeze us and shape us into the likeness of itself, there's something else can happen in us. Not conformity, 
but transformation. Now this word is from the Greek word, we get our word uh, metamorphos, uh, metamorphosis. What happens when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly? It means to change into another form. And this is for born again people. See, just because you got born again doesn't mean that your mind automatically thinks right. That's why he tells us here, you need to be transformed and how it's going to happen by the rest of the phrase says what? By the renewing of your mind. Now think about what he's saying. Be, you'll be changed into another form as your mind is renewed. You'll be changed into a different person. Do we believe this or not? Now there's been a, an error in, in, with a lot of folks in church trying to get people changed that need to change but only doing it through prayer or through laying on of hands or some of the things that they consider to be the most spiritual. And obviously we believe in prayer. Obviously we believe in laying on of hands. But he didn't say transformed by prayer. That's right. That's right. He didn't say transformed by the laying on of hands. Because a whole lot of times people are wanting you just pray for me and fix it for me. And you can't unless you can get their mind changed. They're not going to change. Well, just pray for me. Pray for me till my mind changes. <laughs> I can't. I can pray for you. I can join with you. But your mind is in your control. And the Lord's not going to make you stop thinking wrong things and start thinking right things. And the devil can't. Now, he will do his best to convince you that you can't help but think things you don't want to think. And if you buy into that, you're in trouble. I said, if you believe that lie, you're, you're done. But it's a lie. Your mind is your mind. And you can think on what you choose to think on and not think on what you choose to not think on. That's the truth. And that truth will make you free. Now there's some things you can do that make it easier or harder for you, but don't doubt that truth. Yes. Everybody say it out loud. My mind, my mind. is my mind. Is my mind. I, don't I don't have to think anything. anything. I don't want to think. I can choose to think anything. I choose to think. My mind my is my mind. Glory to, God. Glory to God. And so there hasn't been enough emphasis sometimes on this and people think, well, I, I just need y'all to pray for me more. I just need, need y'all to uh, lay hands on me. I just need, well, no. Do you want to be changed into another person? Yeah. Come back to the Bible. Yeah. The Bible says that transformation happens by what? Renewing. By the renewing of your mind. Well, then let's don't, let's don't cast the word aside and try to get it done some other way. How many of you are going to get in trouble ignoring what the Lord told you? Amen. Trying to do it. Another, well, I'm just going to pray till it happens. I'm just going to fast till it happens. I'm going to go to every meeting and get people to lay hands on me till it happens. No, if you ignore what he told you to do, you'll be frustrated. Because you'll get everybody and their brother to pray for you and you'll do all this stuff and you'll still be in bondage and you won't be changed and you'll wonder why. And people get mad at God. Well, why won't you help me? Why won't you do this? Well, no, why won't you do what he told you to do? How many have figured out God's not your problem? <clears throat> He's not the one holding us back. And if we could just talk him into doing something for us, we could get somewhere. Now, you know the biggest hindrance you've ever had? Huh? Person you see in the mirror. You can't even blame it on the devil. <coughs> because he's limited in what he can do without you and my cooperation. 
He can only, do you understand, if the devil could control you and destroy you, he would have already done it a long time ago. He's limited in what he can do. He must have our cooperation. But now he's very crafty. He's very subtle. He doesn't come to the front door and say, would you cooperate with me? No. He will bring thoughts to you. He will bring feelings. He will endeavor to influence you. And his preference is that you don't even know it's him. You don't even know, he'd prefer you don't even believe in the devil. Just makes his work easier. But no, that's, that's trying to conform us to something else that we're not supposed to be. We can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Say it out loud. Transformed. Transformed. Changed. Changed. Into another form. form. By the renewing renewing of my mind. mind. Are you interested in getting your mind renewed? Are you hungry? Tell the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm hungry. hungry. I'm desirous. I want want my mind to be renewed. renewed. I'm willing. I I seek you. Show me how. how. In Jesus' name. name. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's what we're doing right here. Right now. Now, we've already covered some ground. And if you haven't been with us before, let me encourage you. Go back in the Word Supply. Go go online. Download it for free. Get to previous messages. It'll help you to, to get more out and be able to hook and go forward with what we're doing now. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Acts and the 14th chapter. I want you to, I want us to pray together and believe further for just a moment here. Uh, <clears throat> this is one big subject. And uh, how, how big is the mind of God? And we're, we're touching some things that are ancient from eternity past in God and extend through eternity future Amen. in God. We, we don't even know how to think about that. But it, it comes to bear with what we are, what we are, what, how God has made us and what He's made us to be and how we will operate throughout the ages to come. Did you know your future does not involve pain and struggle and sweat of your brow? Do you know that? Well, how are you going to operate if not that way? It's not going to be the way the earth is now. How will we function? How will we operate? We're going to function like sons of God. How do sons of God function? Like God, who they are sons of. Even in this life here and now, we're told to be imitators of God as dear children. God is not grunting and straining or sweating. (laughs) How has he done what he has done? And how will he do in time to come? Well, we know he did it by his spoken word. But what is a word? But a thought expressed. A word, I'm speaking words to you right now. But if I started speaking in another language that you didn't understand, what would it mean to you? I'd be saying the same thing, but what would it mean to you? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Because the sounds bouncing off your eardrums are not conveying the thoughts. 
So you can see the Lord's had us on words on Sunday. And this is the perfect companion, it is. isn't it? Because what are words? Their thoughts spoken, thoughts expressed. If you were here, last time we spoke on this, I asked you a question. What is a thought? Anybody remember the question? Did you get the answer yet? What, what is a thought? We, we throw the words around. We've, we've lived with it for our whole life. People talk about, I'm thinking. I had a thought. What are you thinking? Well, we got together and talked it over and thought about it. And what does that mean? What did we do when we thought? What was going on? What is a thought? Where do they come from? How do they exist? What is their purpose? Say it out loud. What is a thought? thought? Uh, Before we go to uh, Acts, go to Psalms. I think we've got to work our way to Acts. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. He said, O Lord, Verse 1, you have searched me and known me. You know my down sitting and my uprising. You understand my thought afar off. He, he sees and knows and understand, understands our thoughts from a distance. He, he sees us getting to a thought before we get there. He knows where we're going and what thought, where that thought's coming from and where it's going to. Do thoughts matter? If thoughts were inconsequential and unimportant, would God bother no. to know your thought afar off? No. One, of the, one of the first steps toward getting our minds renewed is we must acknowledge and embrace and believe that thoughts are significant. Amen. Thoughts are not nothing. Thoughts are important. And it matters a great deal Amen. whether we think a thought or don't. Keep reading. He said, you compass my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all my ways and there's not a word in my tongue, but oh Lord, you know it all together. He, he saw the thought for you got to it and then he saw the word for you spoke it. And what is a word? It's a thought spoken, a thought expressed. You've beset me behind and before, and your hand is upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. In our present state, it, for lack of a better word, it boggles us to try to comprehend what doesn't have a beginning and what doesn't have an end. Because everything we've ever come in contact with has a start and a middle and a finish. But we're dealing with things bigger than that. We're a part of things bigger than things that have a beginning and end. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? And he talks about how the Lord is everywhere. Uh, Verse 17, notice this. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they're more in number than the sand. And when I awake, I'm still with you. God's thoughts are 
awesome. How can you describe them? They're too wonderful for mere words. And yet they are expressed in different degrees through words. This book, what is it? He said it's, it's God's Word. Okay, but, but what does that mean? Some of these letters that are grouped together mean nothing to different people in different countries. Right? What, what, what is this book? It is a collection of containers of God's thoughts. You can read them, you can hear them, and a thought that came up in God can come into you. And we can think God's thoughts. Is that big? Yes. How big is it? To think God's thoughts. Now this is another evidence that we are not just a more highly evolved animal. Your puppy as great as he may be, is not thinking God's thoughts tonight. Nor is your cat. Hmm? They're not in the same class of being that we are. They're amazing creations. They're amazing. But they're not us. We're not even angels. Hear people talk about, you know, God took this one because he needed another angel in the choir. Or, we're not angels. We're in a different class of being. We have freedoms angels don't have. We're created in the very likeness and image. Now I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. What is an image? Of God. Jesus is the Word of God. He also is the image of God. The express exact image. The Word expressed the image. And you and I are born and predestined to be conformed to the same image. Glory to God. Those last statements came right out of my spirit. Didn't even touch my mind. Glory to God. He's answering our prayer. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. So I want you to read this verse out loud. Say verse 17. Say it for yourself. How precious also are your thoughts unto me. Is that true? Who are you talking to? Oh God. How great is the sum of them. People are hungry to, to, to read the latest novel, to watch the latest movie, to, to get the latest gizmo gadget technology. We are to be hungry yes. to hear a thought of God. Yes. Shouldn't we? That ought to be the greatest hunger we have is to find out what God thinks. Because there's power in his thoughts Amen. when we think them to renew our insides Hallelujah. and cause us to be transformed into something else be to God. than what we were. 
Glory to God. I'm a different person than I was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm believing I'll be a different person next year than I am now and the next. How will it come to pass? Transformed by the renewing of our minds. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Say it again, verse 17. Say it again to the Lord. How precious also are your thoughts unto me, O God. Hallelujah. You ought to lay in your bed tonight and tell him, tell him that again. You ought to get up in the morning. You ought to go down the road and say, oh, God, your thoughts your thoughts are precious to me above any material thing. Your thoughts, your thoughts. You know why you're born again? You know why you're even saved? You know why you're not going to hell? Anybody know in here? Somebody preached. Words. And you heard those words. And the thoughts Oh, what a thought. (laughs) The thought of the truth that the Redeemer came and the Word became flesh. God became man. Hallelujah. And He took your sins and He took mine and He died on the cross and He paid the price and He raised from the dead. There was a time you didn't know those thoughts. There was a time you had never thought those thoughts. What did those thoughts do to you? You heard those words, and as you're hearing those words, you're thinking those thoughts, and your heart was agreeable to it, and you opened yourself up to it, and the Holy Ghost come and got in the chair with you. Come on now. And convicted you and moved on you And you might have cried and you might have laughed and you might have praised God and you gave your heart to the Lord Lord. and you were born again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord told Cornelius, go send to Peter and he'll come. He'll tell you words whereby you and your house will be saved. Hallelujah. Why? Because those words contain God's thoughts. Praise the Lord. Now there are other thoughts in the earth that are not of God. And the world's full of them. And if you think them, just like God's thoughts will transform you, If you think these wrong thoughts, perverted thoughts, evil thoughts, bad thoughts, they will conform you to the ungodly world. If you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, how are you conformed to the world? By failing to renew your mind, thinking the wrong things. Down at the end of the uh, Psalms, verse 23, the psalmist prayed this. And you and I should pray it too. He had just got through saying a few verses earlier how, how precious are your thoughts. And here he says in verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my thoughts. Now we know he already said he knows them afar off. Verse 24, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Do you want to know if you've been thinking wrong? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I have prayed quite a bit about this in recent months. And I'm, join me in this. I believe your heart is the same. There is so much said about God that is wrong. 
There is so, so much even preaching and talking and teaching about God that is absolutely wrong. It is misrepresentative of God. And there's so many people that don't know, religious people, that don't know God until they assume that nobody knows God any better than they do. And they don't know Him. So they can just create anything they want to imagine is God and say God said this and God did that and God's like this and God like that and thousands of people are run shout about it. And it's got nothing to do with Him. I have a desire to be rid of all that is not Him. Every goofy, twisted, distorted, religious concept and idea that's got nothing to do with God, I want it out of me. Amen. I want it away from me. Amen. I want to see him the way he really is Amen. and know him in truth. Amen. My job is ministry. And one of the big, I, I've prayed this many a time over the years and it's such a desire of mine. Lord, help me not to misrepresent you. Help me not to tell anything about you or leave a wrong impression about you. I believe it's happening. I believe the Lord's helping us. He's teaching us. Helping us to get purged of the junk. See, a lot of stuff you grew up with. Your parents, their parents, their parents before them. And if something's been in that, that, with generations like that for that long, you cannot even notice it. And there's a whole lot of stuff that people just assume. I don't want to assume. Do you? If I've been assuming, I want to know. I want the Lord to help me, get me by the nap of the neck and go, no, I'm not like that. No, I didn't say that. No. I've never been like that. No, I've never done that. No, that is not how it works. That's not me. I want to know. Don't you? I want to know. And I'm believing he's teaching us and showing us. And that, and in that happening, what's happening? We're thinking God's thoughts after him. Can you see the mind is getting renewed and getting changed? And what's that going to do to us? We're going to change. Yes. We're going to quit doing some stuff we were doing and we're going to change. And we may start doing some things we weren't doing. Why? Because we're, we're not being conformed. Some of us say, well, being conformed to the world. Yeah, but a whole lot of the world has gotten in the church. Just because it's religious and got melodious organ tones and stained glass doesn't mean it's got anything to do with God. Are y'all with me? And you can dress up and you can fix your hair and you can put on a tie or this or that and you can say hallelujah and glory and amen and not have one thing to do with God. And I just despise all of that. <laughs> How about you? Life is short. We ain't got time to play with junk. And if the Lord's not interested in it, I'm not interested in it. If he don't care about it, I don't care about it. If it's important to him, I want it to be important to me. That's what we're talking about. Being renewed so that we think like he does. And we see things like he does. Is he real, saints? Come on, is yes. he real? Is he real? Yes. He's not a figment of somebody's imagination. He's not a bunch of religious junk. He is real. Yes. God the Almighty yes. is sitting on the throne right now, tonight. Yes. He created the heavens and the earth. He's real. Amen. He's real. He's, there. he's real. Yes. And he's knowable. Yes. I said he's knowable. Yes. Jesus as a man walked in close fellowship with the Father. Didn't he? he showed us how it's done. <laughs> and what he knew of the Father made the religious world so mad yes. they killed him. Yes. Didn't it? Yes. And he had to tell them over and over again. He said, I know him. Mm -hmm. And if I said I didn't know him, I'd be a liar like you. 
Because you say you know, and some of the most religious people, he said, he said, no, you're of your father, the devil. God's not your father. Well, man, they were the high priest. They were the most, you know, uh, re regarded people in the whole area. And he's telling them they don't even know God. Isn't that awful? Yeah. Preachers, leaders of the people, don't even know God. That's right. Awful. Yeah. But it does not have to be. That's right. I said it does not have to be. That's right. Let's, we're about to pray this. Let's believe and allow the Lord to teach us Amen. and show us what is not Him yes. and what is Him. Yes. Are you willing, saints? Yes. And if you'll do this, he'll show you some things that you were just sure was God for the last 40 years of your life. But let's not be content to stay in the dark. We're getting renewed <laughs> in our mind. We need some stuff erased. We need some stuff inputted, new, right? Right? And what will it do to us? What will it do to us? It will transform us into different people. Mm -mm. Verse 33, pray it 23. Pray it out loud, sincerely to the Lord. Say, say Lord, Lord, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me Lead me in the way everlasting. Show me what is you and what is not you. What is your truth? What is men's ideas? What is right? What is wrong? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, this, all this stuff that men have come up with about God is in the way of the real thing. Yes. If you're full of that and spending all your time with that, it's, dis, it's displacing the real. And you've got to turn loose and get rid of the, the junk to make room for the, the real. And let's not love tradition more than we love the Lord. Amen. If he shows you something that you and your folks and your group and uh, any of us, myself included, thought and said that you were so sure it was right, if he shows you that's wrong, that's not him, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What if you yourself preached it for the last 10 years? You were so strong on it, you'd yell it from the rooftop. What are you going to do? Help me out. Will you humble yourself? Will you repent? Yes. Will you admit you were wrong? Yes. If you will, you can be transformed. You can become a different person. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Transformed. 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 Thank you, Lord. You know you ought not amen everything. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you ought not amen everybody. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for having mercy on us. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's not about who's right. It's about what's right. We know who's right. God's right. His word's right. Amen. You still have acts? Don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing. Renewing. Thank you, Master. Renewing of your mind. Thank you, Lord. What is a thought? 
I'm not quite ready to read Acts. What is a thought? Go to Genesis. How about that? We have to work our way to Acts. <laughs> Genesis, the sixth chapter and the eleventh chapter. Genesis six and five. Then we'll go to Genesis eleven. We we need to answer this question: What is a thought? <clears throat> God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. This is right before the great flood, Noah's time. And he saw what? How did the world get to the place where it just needed to be destroyed? It was so foul and so perverted and distorted that God himself said, this thing just needs to be wiped off. Here he tells you, the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Did you hear that phrase? Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. What were people thinking? They were only thinking and imagining evil all the time. I mean, wherever there were groups of people and camps and, and cities and, and tribes, if, if you could have flown around the earth at that time and you could have touched down over here and saw what people were thinking... They weren't thinking about God. They weren't thinking about doing any good or helping anybody. They were thinking about stealing and lying and adultery and fornication and perversion and murder. And you go over here to this part of the country, be the same thing, over here the same thing. It'd be like in the, in the U.S. going to New York and the same thing, Florida, same thing, California, same thing. Everywhere you went, the only exception on the planet was Noah. And his family. Everywhere else, everybody was just continuously thinking and imagining perversion and evil and ungodliness. How did the world get to such a state? You can see the work of the enemy, can't you? Something was going on to influence the whole world to think that way. Wasn't it? Hold your place there and go to 2 Corinthians 3. Actually, we'll read the fourth chapter and then we might back up to the third chapter, but 2 Corinthians 4. Did it matter what they were thinking? What they were imagining? That's what got the, the whole population of the planet to the place where it was destroyed. 2 Corinthians and the fourth chapter. Verse 3, he said, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has done what? Blinded. He has blinded what? The minds of them which believe not. Now, the gospel has been preached some on this planet, hasn't it? How is it that there are still millions upon millions unsaved? How is that? It's because there's an influence in this earth that is working to block these glorious thoughts in the words of the gospel from the minds right. of those who so desperately need it. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the what? Image, Image 
of God should shine unto them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Through the preaching and teaching of the Word, the Holy Spirit uses those words. He uses those thoughts. And if a person will open up their mind and heart to it, the light will shine. Glory to God. And they'll be enlightened to their lost condition, their need of Jesus, to the truth of the gospel. And if they'll receive him, they'll be saved. They'll be born again. It's what happened to you. It's what happened to me. But there's something trying to prevent it. There is darkness over the whole face of the planet. There is a pervasive darkness darkness that is just blocking the minds of millions. And people see things and hear things, but they never saw it and they never heard it. The truth is being preached. I mean, thank God, how much preaching is going on on TV now? TV and satellite and meetings and churches. I mean, not everything's being preached perfectly, but the basic message of gospel is going out in a big way. So how is it that all these people, some have heard it so many times, they despise it. And when they come across the channel, they go, oh, another preacher, blankety blank, blank, change the channel. How are they still lost? How did they not see what you saw when you heard it? What I saw when I heard it, how have they not seen it? Their minds are blinded. 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 Somebody say blinded. Blinded. And that's what you can see that pervasiveness through the, over the whole world in Noah's time. Everywhere you would go, you could look at the people and they're scheming. Everybody is scheming how to get ahead, how to take this from this person, how to get this person's land or money or take this person's wife or husband, get what they want, get ahead of this one. They're scheming, lying, stealing, deceiving, murder, whatever it took, and the whole planet until God was just fed up with it. And it just... He, he, he spoke judgment and the whole thing was flooded. This thoughts, what's going to make heaven heaven? Soon we'll, we'll, we'll see and know. I heard a man give a testimony. He died in a crash and was dead for some time. And you've heard a number of these stories and, and uh, I, I'm surprised at how much they have in common of people that were from different ages and groups and continents of the world. And, and yet how many, th- have you heard, how many of them you heard, they said they saw this bright light yes. and they were just irresistibly drawn to the light. Well, did you know who is light? Yes. God is light. <laughs> and this one man described how he was taken to heaven and he described some amazing things. And he said he was there for a few minutes and he, and he just awestruck with things, but then he, he realized there's no heaviness here. There's no darkness because there's no sin there's no, and he, he, it, it hit him. He had never been in a place like that because this earth is heavy and dark and everything has been tainted and affected by sin and, and the curse and death and, and thoughts are real. And when people are thinking wrong thoughts, it taints the very atmosphere. You, you may not know everything that people are thinking, but it's real. And it affects the very environment around them. 
and their houses and their places of work. Uh, we, we know more about this than we think. You come into a place and you'll just go, wow, this is a great place. This is a fun place. This is a, and what's happening is there are beings of light in that place, thinking thoughts of God and speaking words of God and it changes and transforms everything around it. And you go to other places and, and you've never even been there and you just get off and walk in the door and you go, ooh, this place is, ooh, feels weird. And you don't even have to know. You can just look at people and, and look at their eyes and, and you can tell they think perverted stuff all day and all night. And they put on a smile and go, hi, may I help you? But it's unclean in the whole area. Because these things are real. They're real. What is a thought? When it said in the passage that their, their thoughts and imaginations were only evil continuously, you get one of the main definitions of the word thought. It means to weave, to fabricate. The word thought here means to weave, to fabricate. The word imagine means to mold into a form, to squeeze into a shape. What is a thought? A thought is a shaper. A thought is spirit substance that shapes. You see the language in Romans, don't you? Don't be conformed. Don't be molded. Don't be pressed into a cookie cutter of ungodly sinner folks. But instead, what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because God's thoughts will shape you into something else. Not, not ungodly and worldly, something else conformed into the image of the one who came and died for you. Hallelujah. So that more and more every day of your life, every month of your life, every year of your life, more and more, you think like Jesus. You act like him. You talk like him. You respond like him. You pray like him. Come on, is this your desire now? This is your calling. This is your destiny. You are destined, predestined to be completely conformed into the image of the Holy One. You are. That's where you're headed. And by the grace of God, you will get there. You might not look and sound exactly like him. Or some folks might not look and sound 30% like him. Or, or 3.5% like him. But he said you'll get there. He, Jesus himself is believing for you to get there. And his faith works. He prayed that we would get there. Have you read John? Have you read first? He prayed and believed and released faith that you and I would get there and we will. We will. You just got through reading first John. The Bible said it does not appear yet. But when we will see him, what are we going to say? When we see the glorious master coming with the clouds of glory, Amen. we will see him and we, the, the Bible says, we will be alerted and aware that we are like him. Hallelujah. Because as he is, so are, am I quoting scripture saints? Come on. So are we in this world. We're going to look up and go, And he's going to say, I told you, I told you, 
you are like me. Hallelujah. And so for the few days until we get out of here, we are to be what we are. And not, like, not let the world tell us we're not. And not let the un ungodly world mold us and try to press us into what they are. We're not what they are. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud, I'm being transformed. I'm being transformed. By, the By the renewing of my mind. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What is a thought? A thought is a shaper. A thought is a spiritual form. A shaper. We, we talked about this. In fact, go to, go to Jeremiah. How about it? If you got time, you got time? Go to Jeremiah. Let's talk about this. this the words are used that describe this passage the definitions of these words. In Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. While you're going there, I'll read Isaiah 6 and 8. You're going to, excuse me, I'll read Isaiah 64 and 8. You're going to Jeremiah 18. Isaiah 64 and 8 says, But now, o Lord, you are our Father, and we are the clay. You are our potter, and we all are the work of your hand. This describes what thoughts do. It's exactly what a potter does with clay. Jeremiah, you're, you're holding your place there in the 18th chapter, <clears throat> verse 2. Jeremiah 18, 2. The Lord told the man of God, he said, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. O house of Israel. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen a, a potter or on TV or some kind of video or representation of a potter with some clay and the wheel is spinning? Have you ever seen some of the vessels that some of these highly skilled artists can produce? Yes. And yet it started with a big clump of clay. Yes. Now this beautiful, ornate vase or vase, depending on where you're from. Where was that before it got on the shelf? So, well, it was in that big lump of clay. That was just clay. Where was that vase? Where was that vase? It was in the thoughts of the potter. God tells us that is exactly how we are with him. How did we get here? Where did we come from? People talk about the unanswerable questions of the universe. Verse, no, they're already answered in the book. Yes. Where did we come from? We were in the thoughts of God. He conceived us. Not millions of duplications Every one of us is as individual as can be. He could have made us all carbon copies if he wanted to. Every one of us was first a thought in him. Glory to God. 
And now here you are. You see the, the picture of it so clearly with the first man. Where was Adam before there was an Adam? He was in God's thoughts. And what did God do? He reached out with his hands. And what he had in here, he made arms and legs and noses, eyes and ears, intestines, lungs and knees. He had all that in him. And he made it. Glory to God. Before it was here, it was in Him. And of course, all of us have come from Adam and Eve. And so when He made them, He made all of us. Because we were all in them. The complexity of the billions on the planet was in Adam, the first man, when He made him. That's why God didn't have to make another one, number two and three and five thousand and five million because the ten billionth one was in Adam when he made him. Glory to God. But then Adam, Eve, disobeyed God, sinned, fell. So there needed to be Another Adam. <laughs> and he is the last Adam. And oh, come on, are you awake, saints? Are you, are you listening? And when the word was spoken, Mary conceived. She didn't conceive from a human father. She conceived from a word which carried a thought That's right. from the Almighty. The angel carried that word that had the thought of God in it and he brought it and gave it to Mary and Mary didn't understand it, but she said, be it unto me according to your word. Behold the handmaid of the Lord and conception occurred in her. The word literally became flesh and grew in her womb and was born and lived and walked and showed us how to live and be uh, a representative of God and please God and went and paid the price. Amen. And when he was raised from the dead without going into all the scriptures, I hope you know them, the Bible teaches us that we were raised. Amen. And just like, doesn't Romans talk about it? In Adam all die, in Christ all are made alive. Just like the billions were physically in Adam when God made him, Hallelujah. all the redeemed throughout all the ages were in Christ. When God raised him from the dead, he raised me, he raised you, he raised everybody that would ever believe on him. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to, Glory to God. And the seed, the incorruptible seed of the Word of God is in me and in you. Amen. And that seed will produce after its own yes. kind. Yes, it will. Glory to God. Glory to God. Where are you in your scripture? What is a, a thought? A thought is a spiritual form that shapes. Go to 2 Corinthians again, the third chapter, and I think maybe we can close with this. Thoughts are spiritual spiritual substance that has the power to shape. Where was that vase? 
what gave the potter the power, the knowledge, the ability to shape that into the form? He or she knows exactly what it's supposed to look like. They can already see it when all you can see is a big lump of clay. And we're not talking about, I know some people make little things that look goofy, but I'm talking about an artisan. That some of these vases are centuries old. And you'd look at them and just, in our day of industry and machinery, think, how in the world could you create something like that? with the latest, greatest equipment and machinery, how did they make that? It was in here. And it was in here. And that thought was the spiritual shape. And it gave them the knowledge, the wisdom, the skill to know exactly how light of a touch how heavy of a touch, how fast the wheel to spin, exactly how to decorate it or to paint it or to put the gold leaf or, or whatever on it. That was in here, but it got out here. Why? Because while that thing's turning and you're seeing clay, they're seeing something else. And they just kept working until what they saw in here appeared here. And what they're looking at here looked exactly like what they saw here when there was no vase. And God tells us that is exactly what's going on between him and us. <laughs> but he needs our cooperation as to how hard this is to take place, how long it takes for it to take place, how arduous, difficult, because there's another influencer. There are thoughts that are not from God. What are they? They are also spirit shapers. There are perverted works, books, movies, things that'll show you how to sin and how to be evil. And if you think about it, what will it do? It will work in you to shape you into that. If you think on that junk night and day, it will it'll cause you to begin to talk like it and, and use the same inflections and, and see things the same way and approach things the same way. What's happening? It's shaping you. It's shaping you. The devil wants to conform all of humanity to his wicked, perverted self. He wants to create the whole world in his likeness and image. See, he has a God complex. He wants to be God. And he ain't God. And he never will be God and he'll never get close. And he knows it and his time is so short and that's one reason he's so mad. But tough. Because what he so wanted, we get. It's happening for us. God didn't make us angels or animals. He made us to be conformed to his exact image. Like father, like son. And when he looks at you and me now, See, the devil will try to get you to focus on your mistakes and your shortcomings and your ignorances. But did you understand your father is looking at you through the righteousness of Jesus? He sees you. That's the only way you could even be sad. That's the only way we could even approach the throne of God. He's looking at us through that. And he's going to keep looking at us through that until we are formed into that. We might look like a great big old wobbly piece of clay flopping around on the wheel. But you know what he sees? He sees a priceless, one of a kind vessel that is just like the master Jesus. And it doesn't matter if it takes 10 years, 100 years, 10,000 years, you're headed that way. 
and he will keep looking at you and he will keep, as much as you yield to him, he'll move and he'll mold and he'll shape and he'll bring his thoughts into you and you'll think them and that'll change and, that, and, and, and it may not seem like much has happened but all at once a great big old clunk will fall off <laughs> and you'll get free and you'll go, whoo, this is so much better. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 3 describes it. Verse 14, again he talks about people's, this is 2 Corinthians 3, 14, he talks about people's minds being blinded. Verse 16, nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Now, this has been used and bannered about, and it is true. It's true. But keep it in context. What's he talking about? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. He's talking about people being blind and then people being able to see. Hallelujah. He's talking about people being in darkness and then people having light. Glory and keep reading. But we all with open face, nothing covering our face, beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of the Lord. Like what do you see when you look in a mirror? Well, you see your own reflection. When you look in your mirror at home, you see this, flesh. Maybe it makes you happy, maybe it don't. <laughs> but this is what you see. But when you look in this mirror, <coughs> you see the exact image of Christ that you have been born again to be Hallelujah. and made. There are no pimples or wrinkles or sin or junk or perversity and you're looking at you because yes. you are in him. And he is in you. Come on, are you listening, saints? And as you behold this book, you know, uh, we, we talked about this earlier about how so many folks have gotten away from the word and they talk about all kind of things about God that's not really true and real. Look in the epistles at how Paul prayed for the people he ministered to. Again and again, he's not pleading with God to do something for them. I didn't say he never asked the Lord to do something for him, but again and again, that's not what, he's not asking God to do all the things that you would think. You know what he says? Lord, enlighten the eyes of their understanding. Yes. That they may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of their inheritance in the saint and the exceeding greatness of your power. Well, what's he saying? Help them to see what you've done for them and what they are and who they are. Help them to see it and to realize it. Fill them with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's the way he keeps praying for them. Why? Because everything that needs to be done has been done. Jesus did it. It's already done. And we need to quit begging God to do stuff and realize what he's done. And who we are. And how are we going to be transformed? Not by begging. Not by pleading. Not by breaking records and making confessions and fasting. But by our minds being renewed. Come on, are you listening? And as we behold, at, like in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Tell me what happens. Tell me what happens. Tell me what happens. What happens to us? We are changed into what? Into what we're looking at. We're looking at him, but we're looking at us because we're in him and he's in us. And the more, well, how do we look at him? How do we look at him? We've been looking at him all night tonight. We think his thoughts. 
We hear his words. We let us tell him what he, tell us what he has said, what he has done, what he has thought. And while we're sitting, uh, drinking in, uh, thinking his thoughts, we begin to see him. We begin to see Jesus. And as we see him, that's us. We, we, and as we're beholding, what happened? We are transformed. We are changed into what, in the same image. We're changed into the same image. It doesn't all happen overnight. It happens from glory to glory. It happens progressively, and it happens by the Spirit of the Lord Hallelujah. who's bringing liberty in all these areas. Well, I preached myself happy. Everybody stand up. Stand up on your feet.